Welcome to this YSL video tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you a little bit about how to work with styles in Microsoft Excel as a way to speed up how you format workbooks. What you'll learn in this session is, first of all, what styles are and how you can work with the existing styles in an Excel workbook. Then we'll move on and teach you how you can create your own custom styles, including how you can modify those later on. Finally, we'll teach you how you can place your created styles in any other workbook that you've created. So let's get started. Whenever you create a new workbook in Excel, you're already provided with a number of existing styles. You might not be aware that they're there, but I can just quickly prove this to you. If I type in some text into cell A1 there, and I'm not really inventive, I know, but it's enough to demonstrate the principle. And then on the home tab of the ribbon, this is Excel 2010, um, look for the cell styles button. It's in the same place in Excel 2007 as well. If I click on the drop down arrow here, you can see that I'm provided with a number of existing styles. Now really all a style is, is a collection of formatting options. So with whichever cell I have selected at the moment, if I hover my mouse over any of these styles, it will show me that that cell will be formatted in a particular way. So you can see that styles change things like the background colour of the cell, the font colour, the font size, some put borders around cells and so on. So really all, the, all this is is a quick way to apply some formatting to some cells. Now that's all well and good in a fairly basic blank workbook like this. But if I quickly switch to one with a bit more data in it, like this one, hopefully you'll easily be able to see the benefits of using styles to format sheets rather than formatting things manually. So I've selected an entire row of data there and I'm going to head back to the cell styles button and I'm going to apply the heading to style to that list of cells. So you can see that every single cell in that row now is formatted in the same way. And you do similar things for a column of cells as well. And there we go, selected a specific bunch of cells. And I'm going to give these um, the accent one style as it's called. So there's the idea. That's how styles work. You select cells, choose a style from the list, and it will quickly format cells in the way you've asked. So that's all well and good as long as you're happy with the existing styles in Excel. Things get a bit more interesting though when you start to use your own custom styles. So to demonstrate how custom styles work, I've just switched back to our blank workbook. Well, it's not quite so blank anymore. I've uh, got a cell here that has some text in it and I've applied the heading one style to that cell. Just before I get started with uh, our custom style, I'm going to switch this cell back to the normal style. should have mentioned that earlier on, actually. The normal style is the one that defines the, the default formatting for all cells in a new workbook. So whenever you create a new file, every cell has got the normal style applied to it. Okay, now I'm going to create a custom style. And there's two main ways I can go about doing this. The first method involves formatting a cell and then creating a style based on that cell. And the second method involves creating a style and giving it a name and then applying all of the formatting options via a dialog box. I'm going to take method number one. I'm going to apply some formatting to this cell and then create a style based on it. So I'm going to try to create some kind of a pseudo wise owl style for text in this cell. So I'm going to try to give it a sort of pale blue font colour first of all. I can do this using the standard uh, formatting tools on the ribbon. Alternatively I can use the format cells dialog box as well. So I'm going to right click on that cell actually and use the format cells dialog box. So any of the options available on this format cells dialog box are applicable to a style and will be saved along with uh, the style when you create it. So I can do things like change the font alignment, do silly things like make it diagonally reading text. All I want to do is create some kind of font colour. So there we go, there's a pale blue font colour for, for the text in the cell. On the border tab I'm going to give it a thick bright red underlined border. Oops, missed, there we go. Um, I could change the fill colour as well perhaps. I don't think that I really need to do it. I'm going to leave it as a, as, a, as a no fill cell. So at that point I'm going to click OK. And just to quickly check, there we go. That's what I'd like cells with my style to look like. So to create a style based on that cell, you need to select the cell, head to the cell styles button, click on the drop down arrow and find the option that says new cell style. You can give your new style a name. I'm going to call it something like Wise Owl Heading. And then finally, click the OK button. 
So there you go, that's all it takes to create a new cell style. So the idea now is that if I type in uh, some more text in some cells here, I should be able to select those cells, use the cell styles button to apply that style to those cells. And that's how easy it is. And the second method of creating a, a custom cell style involves not formatting a cell in the first place, but simply going to the cell styles drop down list and choosing new cell style, typing in a new name. So here I'm going to create a cell style that will format, um, format dates actually in a particular way, but still trying to use the same Wise Owl font color. So I'm going to call this Wise Owl Dates. And then before I create the style by clicking the OK button, I'm going to head to the Format button here. And that will open up the Format Cells dialog box. Now we've just seen this uh, to format normal cells in the standard way. Now the same dialog box here won't affect any cells that I have selected on the worksheet. Whatever I do here simply affects the style that I'm about to create called Wise Owl Dates. So what do I need to do? Head back to the Font tab first of all. And I'm going to try to choose that same font color first. Excellent. And then to change the date format, I'm going to head to the Number tab here. And I'm actually going to create a custom date formatter, a quite specific one. I'd like to see my dates formatted in quite an elaborate way. So they have a full day name, uh, the day of the month, then the full month name, and then a four digit year. If you're not familiar with these codes, then um, I haven't quite got time to go into them here. We've done a separate video on how to create custom formats, custom number formats in Excel. Uh, but this will create quite an elaborate date format. You'll see the effects fairly soon. So if I choose OK, choose OK again, I now have a brand new cell style called Wisel Dates. So if I perhaps enter a date into a cell, I'm just going to hold down the control key and press the semicolon here to enter today's date into a cell. Nice little handy keyboard shortcut for you. And if I head back to my cell styles button, I can quickly apply my custom format to that cell. Which formats it like that. And that'll be true for any range of dates that I create now. So if I fill a series of dates, like so, head back to the cell styles button and click on the Wise Isle Dates style, there we go. All my dates formatted in exactly the same way. So now that we've created a couple of custom styles, what happens if you change your mind and you want to change something about them? That's really straightforward actually. The simple technique to use is head back to the cell styles tool, find the format that you want to modify. So I'm going to change, let's see, I'm going to change both actually. I'm going to change the maybe the font typeface of both of these styles. So I need to right click on the style I want to change and then choose the modify button. This will display the style dialog box and I can click the format button here to open up the format cells dialog and then eventually we can get into changing the font that I want to use. So instead of using the uh, the default Calibri, I'm going to find, uh, let's find Arial. There we go. In fact, just to try to make this a little bit more obvious, I'm also going to make it uh, italic as well, just so you should be able to see clearly the effect of this. And when I choose OK, and choose OK again, just watch what happens to these cells that have already been formatted with that style. You see that any cell that uses the YSL heading style immediately takes on board any changes that I've made. Notice that this one didn't though, the, uh, the original cell that I used to create this style in the first place. Bizarrely, even though I use this cell to create the Wise Owl heading style, it doesn't actually have that style applied to it. It's currently still got the normal style. So I'm going to apply the Wise Owl heading style back to that cell. So there you go. I can do the same thing then with my other cell style, which was the Wise Owl Dates. So I can right click Wise Owl Dates and choose Modify. Hit the Format button. And then on the font tab, I'm going to make it italic and again, find the Arial font. There we go. Choose OK. Choose OK one more time. Just watch what happens to the fonts for all these cells. There we go. It's a fantastically quick ways to change the formatting of lots and lots of cells in one go and to maintain that consistency across your entire workbook. The cool thing is that that doesn't just apply to custom styles that you've created, you can modify any of the built-in original cell styles as well. So do you remember I mentioned earlier on that whenever you create a brand new workbook, every cell 
by default has the normal style applied to it. Well, if you don't like the normal style, which is a Calibri font in size 11 in this particular version of Excel, you can modify it. So if I right click on the normal style and choose to modify it, I can hit to head to the format button here again and I get the format cells dialog box. So I can do absolutely silly things like maybe I'll change the, the fill color to some horrible orange color and maybe put a bright purple border around all the cells and then maybe change the font color. You get the idea. I'm sure you can do slightly more sensible things with your own particular um, cell styles. When I choose OK, when I choose OK one more time, any cell in this entire workbook which has the normal style applied to it, which is pretty much all of them, will be formatted in that uh, horrific style. So there we go. So it's a fantastic way to quickly change the formatting of an entire workbook in one go. Now one slightly disappointing thing about styles is that when you create custom styles or modify existing ones, it only affects the workbook that you're working in. So I've just created an extra little style here. Um, so I've got a YSL currency style, a YSL dates style and YSL heading style. Now those are going to be really useful things as I work for YSL um, to use in every workbook that I create. But unfortunately, if I create a brand new blank workbook, I'm going to hold down the control key and press N for new. So we go in a brand new blank workbook. If I go to the cell styles button, I lose all my styles, or at least all my custom ones. So the last thing you need to know about styles is how to get styles from one workbook into another. And I can show you that really quickly and easily, actually. From the cell styles button, the very bottom option in the menu is something called merge styles. So I click on that option. What I get is a list of all of the other open workbooks. I've only got one other one open at the moment, inventively called Book 3. I quickly uh, cancel there, switch back to that one. That's the one with my original cell styles in it. So from this Merge Styles button, I can choose to bring in any style from Book 3 into this new file, simply by choosing OK. Now, of course, each workbook that, it, that is created has a list of default styles like Normal and Currency, etc. So if I've made any modifications to those in my book 3 file, if I choose the Yes button here, that is going to bring in the same changes into this workbook. If I'd like to keep the default built-in styles as they are, I'll simply click the No button. So all this will do is bring in unique styles from book 3 into book 4. So I'm going to click No. And what I should be able to see now, if I head back to the Cell Styles button, is that all my useful YSL styles are available again. So there you go, that's how styles work in Excel. Hopefully you'll agree it's a really quick and convenient way to apply standardized formatting across an entire range of cells and to be able to quickly modify that formatting if you should need to. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wisel.co.uk.